Okay, in this video, we are going to take a look at how Tract handles sales and accounts receivable, how those show up uh, when it, they hit a ticket, and then how they show up on your financials, namely your income statement and your accounts receivable statement. Um, we're also going to take a look at what happens when you pass that data over to QuickBooks if you're integrated with QuickBooks. So you can see we have five test tickets here that we're going to sample. Each one of them, they're all very much uh, exactly the same, we're going to the same destination, same number of units. And if we take a look at this, the snapshot of this ticket, we're going to see that um, they are receiving $40 a ton from the mill. They're paying out 25, 10 and five for the different landowner logging and trucking expense. So we're really breaking even on this. And for each of these tickets, we're getting $800 in sales. And so we're going to focus this video on the sales side of this. And so we have five of those tickets. So five times eight is uh, $4,000. And if we go look at a um, income statement, profit and loss statement, we ran this for the 28th through the 11th. And um, by the way, let me flip back over to the these tickets. You can see that the delivery date for all these tickets were uh, Monday the 29th, Tuesday the 30th, and then May 1st uh, on Wednesday. And one thing we want to take a look at is how this, if you if you wanted this ticket to show up in the, in the next month, um, how could you do that if you're sending these to QuickBooks? So if we go back and look at our income statement, wherever I have it saved here, there it is. Um, we have our $4,000 in income. So that's running this report April 28th through May the 1st. Now, if you just went back and ran this report, let's go to our reports and forms, profit and loss, and we just ran it for the first, and we're just going to see that one ticket should be $800 in sales for the month of May so far. So those other tickets don't show up in uh, in May, and they're not ever going to show up in May on, the, on a track statement because all of these uh, dates are based on the transaction date, and your transaction date is for a ticket is going to be based on your ticket date or delivery date. So if we go again, look at this snapshot of this ticket, and you can see we have a delivery date of 5-1. And so all the transaction dates for this ticket are going to be on 5-1. And then same thing for the other tickets. So now let's take a look at how does these, how do these tickets affect the accounts receivable? And if we go look at our reports and forms, accounts receivable, look at our agent report. If we look at that first ticket was on the 28th. So at the beginning of 28th, and by the way, if we look at, uh, these are sales to a mill called LJR. And if we look at LJR as of the 28th, we have zero sales for them on the books for accounts receivable. However, if we go back to the report and we change it to, let's just go all the way to the first because we know our last ticket was on the first. Or actually, let's, let's look at what it was at the end of the month. Then it's $3,200. And so that's the, that's the four tickets minus the one that was on the first. So if we go back now and we do a report as of the first, I would expect to see all $4,000 here. So there's our 4,000 in accounts receivable now as of May 1st. So that's how the, the sales are gonna show up uh, based on the delivery date. The accounts receivable are gonna show up based on the delivery date, which gets to the transaction date. Now, if you want to send this to Quick, if, you, if you're not sending this with QuickBooks, then that's how you can expect to find your books with Track. It's based on that delivery date and the transaction date. 
Um, if you do a single line item transaction for anything that's not affiliated with a ticket, it uses that transaction date. And if we want to send this information to QuickBooks and we want to mark this information as paid, then um, we're going to do that through a mill reconciliation. And we're going to go in and create a new reconciliation. And this is for our LJR mill. And let's just say this is the uh, April reconciliation, April 2024. We're going to put a statement date of the 30th. And we're going to leave the payment date alone for a moment. And we know that there's $3,200 of sales, right, as of the 30th. We looked at, saw that in our accounts receivable, so we can go ahead and fill that in. Um, there were also four tickets at 20 tons, so it should be 160 and then four tickets. Okay, and now we can um, filter this. There's our total of five tickets, but we're just going to select, if we don't want this last one, we can cancel it out. And I did my math incorrectly. It was 20 tons a piece, so 4 times 2 is 80. So let's go back and correct that. Now we're going to refresh. And so now we're reconciled. Now, if we weren't sending this to QuickBooks, we could go in and say, okay, we, we did receive a check for this. We collected a payment. Um, and we want to mark it paid as of the 30th. So if we go back, now it's been updated. And if we go back to our reconciliation and we refresh this, it's going to, it took that $3,200 off the books because we're marking it as being paid. And now we only have the one ticket on the first. And if we wanted to put the first on here, we could do that as well. Um, and it would just update it um, as you would expect. But if you want to group these transactions to send to QuickBooks so that your uh, QuickBooks will show the same accounts receivable and sales, then we can do that by, let's create another reconciliation. And so it's going by this statement date. So let's put this one on the first. This is our May one. Um, I'm going to leave that alone. It's going to be uh, 20 tons, one load, and that was $800, right? There's our one ticket. Okay, we are reconciled. And if we go back and refresh our report, it's still on the books, and that is because the date that we use to pull that off the books is we wait until you tell us that payment date that it was received. So if, if it was received on the first, now we refresh. It is now off the books. And now let's go take a look at our QuickBooks. Okay, we're now on our QuickBooks screen. And we can see that there are, here's the two reconciliations that we sent. And we can choose to send both of these to QuickBooks now. Okay, if this is your first time sending uh, this customer over the QuickBooks, we don't have this customer set up in our QuickBooks yet, so we want to create the customer. And we've already mapped, this is a default uh, QuickBooks account, so it's just mapped to a, a product that we that's, that was default uh, called Masonry. So we'll leave that as is and just pretend this is some sort of timber sales account. And we're ready to send that, so now we're going to click send to QuickBooks. Okay, 
And now we're going to go open our QuickBooks Web Connector. And we're going to ask it to update. And you can normally have this automated to run in the background if you like. Or some people like to see that everything switched over OK. So now let's go to our QuickBooks. And let's go to our customers. And you can see now we have uh, a customer called LJR. It was This was created in the system. It created two invoices in the system. We have one invoice on the 30th and one on the 1st. And if you use an accrual basis for your accounting system, then we should expect to see sales on the 30th of this amount and then sales uh, on the 1st of this amount. Okay, so here's our sales on the first. So that $800, just like we showed on the track statement, it showed up here in May. And if we change this back a few days, oh, I think we have some additional sales in there. Let's try to So we do have an extra invoice in here that's uh, making it so that our number isn't exactly 4,000, but you can see here's the sale of 3,200 on the 30th and then 800 on the 1st. And maybe if we wanted to just narrow this to, if we wanted to back this up as well, so if we just wanted to see the April sales, and there we are. So now let's see what it looks like on our accounts receivable. And so, yeah, you can clearly see that our LJR account has $3,200 in the 1 to 30 range. And then there's the $800 for as of May 30th. I'm sorry, May 1st. So hopefully that's given you a clear understanding of what dates control the sales and the receivables and how those dates get transferred over to QuickBooks. And just remember that uh, the QuickBooks were sent up into, into split into two parts because we created two different reconciliations, one for April, one for May, so that we could split those sales up and we could account for those sales in the two different months that they happened. Now you could have sent all of these in one group if you wanted, and it could have just been, um, you would have, you would have had to recognize those sales uh, either in April or May, one or the other. But if you really wanted to get detailed with how you reflected your sales, then you could uh, set, set up, send the, the two separate reconciliations just like we did. And then if you're using, if you're used to using a cash basis, you might wonder, uh, that you might be used to having it set up so that when you receive the check that it would uh, record the income at that point in time. But by using this, by track sending over this information as an invoice, and if you're using accrual basis, then you don't have to worry about when you receive the check. So we could go open this invoice and we could choose receive payments. 
and we might not receive a payment for this until uh, 520 and let's receive the $3,200 and you could also receive it wouldn't have to be they could let's just do the whole 4,000 maybe they send one check or one statement for all those tickets and so you could have spread that across all of those now we're going to save that so now those invoices have been marked as paid okay so this doesn't change our aging because we on, on the as of the first we received this check on the 20th so on the, as of the 21st if we refresh now we have no more aging because we've taken it off the books based on that payment date and that's the same way that track does it but if we go back to our sales then that's not going to change when we recorded our income that's always going to be based on the invoice date that we sent over Okay, I hope that's been helpful. Please let us know if you have any additional questions.